Siddaramaiah has just said, Muslim populated, if there is a major Muslim population, then the teachers must know uh, Urdu and they should be proficient in it. At the same point of time, when you are making it mandatory, when you are imposing Urdu, there can be a backlash. Just like if you are imposing Hindi in Tamil Nadu, there can be a backlash. When you are imposing Urdu, mandating it, you can inspire a language, you inspire people to uh, learn. Is there a word bank politics also attached to it? How how will it? How people will respond to it? Urdu is a great language. Arabic is a great language. Sanskrit is a great language. Tamil is a great language. It is less about languages and more about the intention which is behind it. And if people are suspecting, if there is a vote ban politics, if there is an appeasement politics, they cannot be blamed. How will it impact the people who are looking for jobs, who want to become government teachers? This language shouldn't be imposed, shouldn't be thrust upon, or shouldn't be thrust down the throat of any uh, uh, state for that matter. Hello and welcome. I'm Nagin Singh. This is One India. And today we are joined by Rahul Iswar. He is an activist. He is also an author. And Rahul, today uh, we are going to ask you about Karnataka government, what Siddha Ramaya has just said. Uh, he's saying that uh, all these Anganwadi teachers who are part of the Karnataka government, if they're working in an area that is uh, Muslim populated, if there is a major Muslim population, significant Muslim population, then the teachers must know uh, Urdu and they should be proficient in it. So how do you see this step? In a, in a state which is, you know, uh, Kannadas are there, uh, Kannada is being spoken there, and now this new rule or this sort of uh, comment, how do you rate it? What do you see? Is there an agenda or how do you rate this entire conversation? Two submissions. First of all, we as a nation have decided to follow three language policy in the earlier 50s and 60s itself, where we will learn our native language, whether it be Kannada, Tamil, Malayalam. Hindi or whatever language, then we will have Hindi as a national link language, which Mahatma Gandhi visualized. Then we will have English as a global language. So it's very good to know more languages. But when somebody is mandating something, it becomes a matter of problem. For example, in Madigere and Chikamagluru, where uh, these spaces where they have decided to enforce it, it is around 31.94% Muslim community population. So this can uh, create some kind of a fissure in the social fabric where some suspicion will be raised. And what about the other 70 percentage is a natural question people will ask. You can definitely say Urdu is a beautiful language. You know, I even though I'm not a scholar, I know a bit bits of Urdu and I've heard a lot of Kavalis in it. I'm a huge fan of Urdu or the Shairis in it. At the same point of time, when you are making it mandatory, when you are imposing Urdu, there can be a backlash. Just like if you are imposing Hindi in Tamil Nadu, there can be a backlash. When you are imposing Urdu, mandating it, you can inspire a language, you inspire people to uh, learn. That's the reason why Mahatma Gandhi sent his son across to my home state, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu almost 100 years back to inspire us to learn Hindi more. He started Hindi Prajara Sabhas. I would request Siddharama Yaji to start Urdu Prajara Sabhas or Urdu community clubs and allocate resources and funds to it. But making it mandatory can create a problem Rather, we should be focusing on promoting a classic language called Kannada, which is a beautiful language, one of the ancient Dravidian languages we have. We should be focused on promoting Tamil, which is one of the oldest languages in the world, rightly pointed out by our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. So this move can backfire, this move can cause suspicion, this move can cause fissures among communities itself. And especially in a state like Karnataka, where uh, Kannada's uh, uh, people speak Kannada, and then uh, Hindi is also something that people resisted. And instead of Hindi asking for Urdu as a language to be given priority, uh, so will this really bring a clash among people, among the uh, Karnatakis who would uh, have this question for sure? That why, uh, if we are not even uh, uh, pro Hindi in that way, then why Urdu suddenly, you know, becoming a big, uh, is, is there a vote bank politics also attached to it? How how will it? How people will respond to it? See, let us be very honest about it. We should. We are a pluralistic nation. We should be as inclusive as possible. Hindu, Muslim, Christian unity or non-believers unity should definitely be there. That's a given. I mean, there is no debate about that. So we should have that unity. At the same point of time, that unity should not come at the cost of one community or at the cost of you know, over-pampering of one community. For example, as per 2011 census, nearly 10.83 percentage of Karnataka is speaking Urdu as their mother tongue. See, they right. definitely have a good speaking, Urdu speaking. They can learn from their uh, home. They can learn from their languages. Shouldn't the government be promoting Kannada as a common language for people who are in Karnataka? And there have been even protests. 
even when the Hindi signboard came, there have been hardline Karnataka groups, which I respectfully differ, differ. they have been smashing the uh, Hindi uh, boards, they have been blackening the Hindi boards. So when even Hindi, which is a national language, even promoted by the father of English, Mahatma Gandhi, has such kind of a backlash, imposing Urdu or mandating Urdu can become an issue. That's the reason why Urdu is a great language, Arabic is a great language, Sanskrit is a great language, Tamil is a great language. It is less about languages and more about the intention which is behind it. And if people are suspecting if there is a vote ban politics, if there is an appeasement politics, they cannot be blamed. Exactly. Like, um, if if this is the mandate that they have given, if they make it mandatory, in that sense, how will it Im impact the people who are looking for jobs, the people of Karnataka, if this is one of the rules that is brought in, how will it impact the people who are looking for jobs, who want to become government teachers? See, let us be very honest about this. See, English is not our language. It is because the British won the world that we have been forced to learn English. Had the Germans and the Nazis won the world, we may have learned German or we may have learned Spanish or Portuguese or Dutch. But right now, English is a global reality, which is an absolute need. When we take a Zoom meeting, it is written in English that it is a Zoom meeting. So let us yeah. understand the reality of the world. Second, yes, we need to have a cultural connect. We need to have roots. Of course, in our, our own personal home, for example, I'm a person who has learned Sanskrit when I grew up. But that is not mandated. It was given to me in my home city. Similarly, such Urdu can be inspired in our Muslim community, Muslim brothers' homes. They can definitely teach and inspire. But when a state officially decides to impose it and make it, that definitely will become an issue. Obviously, if people are criticizing it, you know, they cannot be blamed. That's the reason why Kannada should be promoted in Karnataka, where Kannada language, the great you know, Lord Basaveshwara or Basavanna as we call, you know, so many other cultural icons are there. So Kannada literature should be promoted. Urdu is there, Telugu speaking population is around 8 percentage there. We Malayalis, I am from Kerala, we Malayalis are around say 2 percentage there, hardly a bit of Marathi speaking there. So if tomorrow, unfortunately, or fortunately, a Malayalam speaking you know, space comes, will you mandate that Malayalam, you should absolutely learn Malayalam to become a Sankarvat teacher or say a Kodua so, so, or Kongani. So please remember, this language shouldn't be imposed, shouldn't be thrust upon or shouldn't be thrust down the throat of any uh, uh, state for that matter. You think there will be a massive outrage because of this? Because ultimately it's going to you know, impact the job opportunities of the locals or the people with the domicile that they have, uh, the Karnatakis. So do you think there can be a major protest or... Uh, and, um, uh, I, I hope I hope people uh, resist to these things and I would request our Muslim brothers to also come forward and give a position saying that we can teach our own kids in our own homes. You know, we are also teaching them Canada. We are also making them learn English because these are all realities. When we come to Bangalore, we know a bit of Canada because, you know, that is how the local flavor is. So I would request them not to fall into these kind of uh, appeasement kind of a stuff. Rather, say, what do we actually need? We actually need schools. We actually need, you know, more of Aganwadi. We actually need English education, which is a must for the modern world. We actually need schools. So give them something solid, not, you know, hand out some kind of a dole, hand, hand out some kind of a trivia so that you can be wooed in one sense or the other. I hope, you know, uh, please do take, please learn about the Canada history. Please learn this more. Please remember that this is a must. Uh, Urdu should not come at the cost of Canada. I mean, uh, that's a given. Urdu should not be coming at the cost of Canada because we are living or they are living in Karnataka. The uh, language of the land is very important, just like the law of the land, because language conveys a culture. That language of the land is absolutely needed. And one example I can give, in Kerala, we are having around 27% Muslim community. They are happy to learn both Arabic in their homes and celebrate Malayalam in a great way. We have Mapula Ramayanam. Mapula Ramayanam basically means in Malayalam, Ramayana is translated by Muslim scholars into Malayalam and all. So that synergy should be there. So please remember these kind of these are very sensitive topics. I hope politicians will definitely take care of the sensitivity before implementing any kind of policy like this. Also, when we talk about uh, you know Congress is uh, blamed for their uh, Muslim appeasement politics uh, for so many times, so many years it has continued. But now, uh, if Rahul Gandhi talks about you know uh, that we all should be united and the mohabbat ki dukan and everything then why just one community or just one language uh, becomes uh, becomes a barrier for so many uh, as you rightly said that the population is much lesser than what we can think of and instead of that they want a rule 
which is only for a very small population. So how do you see Congress? They haven't changed at all. It, it is continuing even after 75 years. Uh, Pandeji, the interesting thing is the greatest congressman ever, Mahatma Gandhi, was ready to die for Hindu unity. And especially today, September 25th, yesterday, nearly 100 years back, Pune Pact was signed where Mahatma Gandhi said, I will die, but I will not let Hindus be divided. Pune Pact was the base of the further reservation policy and all of Indian government where the Dalit, the Brahmin, the other Hindu communities were brought together in the Yerwada jail in Pune. And Mahatma Gandhi said, we are not going to be divided and I will only allow Hindu community to be divided over the dead body. But over the years, because of a vote bank concentration, many Congress leaders have moved to far left or moved to extreme left. You know, the Tukde Tukde gangs, people who celebrate saying that, you know, India ki barbadi is no issue or anything any abuse it. So I hope, you know, uh, Modi ji is taking a center-right Gandhian life. Modi ji, as we can all see, is always taking a statesmanly approach. He is trying to be as inclusive and pluralistic as possible, pointing out to his Muslim friend Abbas. See, that is the line we need. We need integration. We need uh, coming together. We shouldn't need appeasement. There is a huge difference between assimilation and appeasement. There is a huge difference between coming together as one people or uniting as one people and you know, having some kind of, yes, there are instances of Islamophobia or instances of you know, anti-Muslim hatred, not only in India, world over. We need to address that. You know, Our greatest president is Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. Right now, you know, before we were speaking, we were you know, planning to celebrate uh, October 15th. Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, let's be. Our greatest president was a Muslim. The Good. Bharat Matashi Jai slogan was given by a, a Muslim uh, and Jai Hind was given by Abid Hassan, uh, no, Abid Hassan of INA. So we celebrate that. But please remember, integrate more, come together as you know, Indians more is what we need along with pluralism. So I, I request Congress to remember Sardar Patel, to remember Mahatma Gandhi, to remember the great nationalistic icons who stood and balanced the nationalistic interest plus minority interest. That's the balance. We need nationally interesting on one hand. Modi ji said this beautifully. You should have a Holy Quran on one hand and Constitution on the other hand. You need to have computer on one hand and the Quran on the other hand. That is the integration that we need. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your time. Don't miss out. Log on to oneindia.com for more updates.